In this video, I'm going to show you our new repricing settings tester. This is a brand new screen that we've added to Price Shack to help you test your repricing settings and understand how they work. Now this is a really exciting week to be a Price Shack user. We also just launched our returns feature, which I hope you had a chance to check out, which can help you pretty much automate most of the process of handling a customer return. So Price Shack is making it easier than ever to substantially automate all of the operations of your dropship business. And uh, this is just another cool feature we also added this week. Now, I recommend that you start by just entering your, your pricing settings um, by reading the descriptions here and choosing numbers that you think make sense. And then once you've done that, you can use this to put in some example prices and see what they would come out on wherever you're selling your products, usually eBay, but uh, could be any destination. So let's jump in. First of all, I should say, if you do this from multiple sources, uh, this, this is different for each of the sources. So choose the source that you, want to, um, that you want to test and then go into the tester here and think of an example price. Let's say we were selling a product where it was $25.35 at the source. We type that in here, hit continue, and then I want to jump down here. We, we show the calculation, but then we show you that would be $32.35 on eBay. So really handy tool. It lets you put in a price of the item on the source and then see what it would be on eBay. It's really useful for when you've configured your settings and you just want to double check and make sure everything makes sense. Now you can stop the video here, use the tool, it's really useful. Um, but if you are curious, I'm going to dive into this formula and give you some more insight into how that works. You don't usually need to understand this. Um, everything works you know, very well. and. Um, and you don't need to understand every last penny necessarily to succeed using Price Jack. But if you are curious how a particular revision was set and you want to understand it down to the penny, then definitely keep watching. So up here we have the variables written out with what they are, and you can hover over them to see what, a little more explanation. And then down here we filled in the actual numbers based on your settings and based on the test price you put in here. This first term, price, is just the price of the offer at the source. So for example, the price of the offer on Amazon. Now the two red terms that say rate, that's actually the conversion rate for the currency. In most cases, that's just one. It's basically not used. However, if you're doing cross-border arbitrage, so if you're, for example, buying on Amazon Canada and selling in eBay US, then we will automatically account for the difference between the Canadian dollar and the US dollar and that's what this term is. So together, this first term gives you the cost of goods sold. That's obviously the most important thing for us to bake into your price. The next term is really everything starting with max all the way through to this second parenthesis here. And this is the margin. And the way this max works is first we compute this portion of it. This is simply the price of the product times your percentage margin, and then we add your fixed margin. So we first compute that. That's basically the margin you've configured. And then we look at your margin min. And we take whichever of those two terms is higher. Now, a lot of people don't use margin min, in which case we'll just use this. But it's basically a safety net you can configure in case you just want, you want to have an absolute sanity check and make sure that you have at least some margin on all your items. Now, one thing to remember is that you may have margin percent and margin fixed the same for all of your items. But you might also be using our range repricer. And that lets you change these numbers depending on the offer price. You know, you have different ranges where these can be different values. Of course, you can also override these margins on the listing itself. So definitely be sure when you're trying to troubleshoot an individual listing that you've looked up the values from the override settings and then also looked in the correct range in your range repricer. The ending part here, these are the two fixed fees that you may incur. The AO fee, that's the automatic ordering fee. There's a checkbox that determines whether you want to include this term or not in your calculation. Um, but it might be a good idea to include it just to make sure that you know, you're making money after all of your fees, including Price Jack's own fee for placing the order at the source. And then PayPal fixed fee is the 30 cents that PayPal typically charges for a transaction. Now the two percentage fees are the PayPal fee percent and the eBay fee percent. And they're 2.9% and 10% respectively. And those go in the denominator down here. And um, it's, it might be a little confusing to you why it goes in the denominator the way it does. And it's just because uh, of this funny thing where, you know, this 10% fee, 
it's not like you just add 10% and then you're able, and then when it gets subtracted back out, it works out evenly. You actually need to put it in the denominator. Um, that's sort of just an algebraic um, thing. And then you can see the numbers here get computed, and that's what resulted in your eBay price. So those are the full dirty details of how your price gets computed. I hope it makes sense to you. Um, if you have any questions on it, put them in the YouTube comments here or, um, or feel free to email support by clicking this bug button and we will help you out. So thank you for watching and thank you for using Price Shack.